Great Search brought to you by Adafruit and DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses the power of engineering to find the most precious things in the world right now. Electronic parts. Okay, so we're going to go to digikey.com and try to find something this week. What are we going to try to find? Okay, so here's what we're going to find. So, you know, this part shortage is kind of an ending. You want to go to the computer? Uh, yeah, let's go to the computer, and I'm going to tell you a story. Here's a story. Uh, there's a story about a part I can't find. <laughs> um, so the, 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 I've actually, you know, a while, about a year, a year ago, I ordered, you know, a year's worth of components from ST sensors. You know, I've been ordering a year's worth at a time, usually instead of a quarter quarter's worth because it's been so tough to get parts and um some parts from st i've been able to get like i got lsm 60 socks and i got some you know ism 330s um but what happened is i often um what i've liked to do is i like to make a combo imu where i take you know a accelerometer gyro i stick it with a magnetometer because it's actually not that usual to get a nine off in one you don't get all accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer in one package. There's the LSM 9DS1, but like really good luck getting that one. You're, it's basically you're never gonna find it. It's pretty common to have them as separate chips. And then you, you fuse the, the data together and you get uh, you know, XYZ orientation, which is cool. Um, and, and you know, like I said earlier, you're not gonna get BNO 055s or 085s like anytime soon. Those are, those are totally unobtainium. Um, so I got the accelerometer gyroscopes, but what's interesting is I've totally not been able to get magnetometers. Um, I did get some list two MDLs, but not the list three MDL. And the list two MDL is a uh, plus minus 50 uh, gauss. And the list three MDL is a uh, plus or minus, you know, uh, 16 gauss, which is the same as um, 1.6 millitesla. So divide by 10 to get from gauss to millitesla. Um, and this is better because you want you want something that has you know good 16 bit uh, resolution um, and accuracy because the Earth magnetic field is uh, much lighter than you know an, an, a magnet that you have in your hand and there's mainly two kind of magnetometers there's like the high range magnetometers that are good for detecting magnets and then there's the low range sensitive magnetometers that are good for sensing the earth's magnetic field um so the the list 2 mdl is is not a is not a bad magnetometer for that but i'm also a little worried i won't be able to get that chip as well other magnetometers i have um i either haven't been able to get or they are the high range type so what i'm you know, and, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm ever going to get the three MDLs again. Um, I, I do have a you know big order in um, with ST, but it's just this, you know, I think everyone's just totally crunched with this part shortage. So what I'm gonna do on this great search is I'm gonna find a high resolution, so like 12, 16, 18, 20 bit, triple axis magnetometer. That's I squared C because I want it to work. You know, I want it to be, um, compatible, not maybe not pin compatible, but it, as as functionally compatible as possible, so I can pair it. You see here, I have the the chip next to the IMU for a nine DOF uh, sensor. So let's go to DigiKey and let's search for. So this is the part I'm I'm looking for the list three MDL. So let's just go there because it's always good to, you know, you start with the part you can't get, and sometimes it's it gives you ideas of how to find the part you can't get. So this is the part that, you know, if you put in that you want some, it says, you know, I don't know, 2059. I don't think it's actually 2059. I think what they're just saying is we don't know when we're going to get the ability to make this. I think you need a particular kind of um, fabrication technology, which is super booked. So what we do want, so let's go down here and then we can use this to search. So we want a magneto resistive active XYZ accelerometer that's uh, sorry magnetometer that's surface mount um you know i don't really i don't i'm not going to spe specify the range because i don't care if there's multiple ranges or one range the voltage supply i'm not worried about it's probably going to be three volts um resolution i don't want to be too picky um package i don't expect to get the same package but i do want it to be you know the minimum is it's a it's a magneto resistive active xyz so let's search also, I want it to be about the same cost. So the 3MDL is, you know, basically one or two bucks. So I want it to be about that price. I don't want to spend um, like $20 on this part. 
Okay, so output type. So this is the thing that I'm going to select first because there's not a ton of options here, um, which is good. Actually, there's only 10. That's very small. Um, so I think I want I squared C and SPI only. So let's let's do that limitation. All these ranges are quite good. Um, remember, the list 3 MDL is 1.6 millitesla. Um, I don't want it to be much bigger than that because I want it to be, again, used for um, earth sensing. So I don't want it more than like five, but all these are, are quite good. All these cover 3.3 volts, which is what's important to me. You know, it's if it's lower, great, but that's all I care about. All of them have uh, 16 plus resolution. So that's really good. So let's see what's available. Um, so there is the, the ST1s. They're not in stock. Um, I think let's, let's look at only ones that are in stock right now. Okay, looks good. So we have a couple options here, actually. Um, and they all, look, they all look pretty good, to be honest. Um, so there is um, from, you know, Memsic, there's a couple options. From Rome, there is an option with a lot of pieces. But what I really liked is, you know, when I was like, okay, well, I'm probably going to buy, you know, 3,000 of these because I'm going to use it in a lot of stuff. When I looked at the price, um, the price of these Memsic ones was like very, very attractive. And I know Memsic makes, you know, good components too. So um, this could be a good alternative. What I'll do is I'll probably make new versions of all those IMU plus magnetometer breakouts. And then when I can get the list 3 MDL, you know, because there's people who have those, the code already in their design, we can always go back. But as long as they have a lot, you know, libraries for all of them, I think people can, can switch pretty easily in case it's another year or two. Um, so there's two options here. Both of them look really good. Um, you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference between, you know, the MMC 5603 and the MMC 5633? Um, they're both very similar. Let's look at the MMC because I did pull up these data sheets. And I do this little trick where I kind of like scroll down and I try to like I try to get like the data sheets to kind of like be almost the same. And then I kind of flip between them <laughs> to see if I can see what's different. And um, if you look down here, what's different, hold on, go down to applications. Oops. What's different is on this one, you see there's a, um, this one has a I3C interface in addition to an I squared C interface. So that's basically what you're gonna pay a little bit more for on the 5633. Um, they're both actually pin compatible. They are not completely code compatible. The register map is a little bit different. Um, but they are, you know, this is, unfortunately, it is a, it's a BGA, it's a WLCSP with 0.4 millimeter pitch. But if it only has four pins, I'm not as nervous about it because I don't have to do a fan out. Like, you know, four pins, I mean, I can just, I can just bring the pins out from each corner. Um, when something has um, nine pins, you know, there's always a pin in the middle and that can be tough to get out. But with four pins, even if it's fine pitch, I'm not, I'm not as nervous about it. Um, so this one is a really good option. So I think I'm going to start, and also I really like that there's 77,000 in stock. I'm probably going to start with, you know, making a, a STEMI QT breakout for this MMC uh, 5603 so I can get Arduino and CircuitPython and Python library code going for it. And then, um, you know, if that's good, I'll, you know, just like connect it up with an IMU and like stack them one on top of each other and then like try twisting and turning it with our um, Fusion code and just make sure that it like works fine with that. And if it does, I'll make new breakouts and just, you know, tell folks like, hey, if you're waiting for this nine off that has the list three MDL and you don't want to wait, um, because the magnetometer is not an important part of an IMU, like you want a good one, but it's not, it's not the thing that really affects the quality of an IMU. The thing that really affects it is the gyro. Um, that's what's important. And so matching, you know, the, as long as the gyro is good, as long as you match it with anything that's a kind of reasonable magnetometer, you're gonna get good data. So um, this one looks good if you're if you're in the, in the market for a magnetometer and you can't get one because you can't get one. 
Um, this one's cheap and available, and uh, you know it's not hand solderable, but it should be pretty easy to work into your pick and place manufacturing setup. That's a great church.